three, two, one. What's up? Crewcast number six, I think. Yeah, six. Rock and rolling. It is Monday. I'm recording on a Monday. Bob is not here. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see that Bob is not next to me. Instead, I have Laney, the Laney Bobster, the other half of uh, our household. Um, if you have only just started following me, Laney is my better half. Um, she is one week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're allowed to say this. I was moving on to uh, the details. Um, one week out, just under from so the show now. This day next week, I might be done. What time? Yeah, I might be finished this time next week. So it's Sunday, Sunday yeah. this week. And it's the... Um, oh, no, it's Monday. It's not it's Sunday. It's Monday. Okay, well, this day next week, I'll definitely be done. Um, it's the PC... PCA. So it's the Physique Culture PCA Association. PCA in Sax Saxon or something, is it? Uh, the Saxon Classic. Saxon Classic. And you're competing in which category? Toned Bikini. What the hell does that mean? It's so you're not you're not buff with an Adam's apple, but you're not just stepped off a beach. Yeah, I think the PCA kind of look for more. They don't look for a soft look at all. So like, there is no kind of soft, okay, kind so of more they do commercial some look. To it. Yeah, they like Venus. so literally like the tone category is the start off category for the women, but it is the, they, they look for trained women. Like every, okay. they're not looking for like a soft look. So for those that don't know about bodybuilding shows, they used to be the women's side of thing, which is now I think actually, was it banned? Not banned, I guess, but they completely discontinued doing women's bodybuilding because obviously in the bigger, what would you call them? Federations at the time. Yeah. They were, they were taking testosterone. They were turning into men. Um, and so that got frowned upon. That got banned off. Then what came in was the bikini category and trained. And this is kind of a differentiation between these two. was so different that they've now created more categories for women, just like yeah. they've done with the men now. So now the men, we've got the physique and the classic. So the women now, you have toned, trained, and figure. All different Yeah, categories, and like they even they? have like differentiations of like they have like toned figure and they have trained figure. But apparently, like I have the right kind of, I suppose like the size legs, but I don't have that. Um, or what you'd like to say is, uh, I've been told I don't have that <laughs> the Anavar shoulders. Oh, lovely. so yeah. yeah, and that's what pretty okay. much like I don't have the huge big shoulders that they look for Capture. in trained bikini. Right. So. Yeah. Okay. So that's a quick breakdown of the, the show that you're going to be doing anyway. But back to us, our household. So we've been um, living under the diet, the diet hold, diet household for Lainey for the past. She did it pretty well. But this, is a good, this is a good bit. This is what I want to talk about um, when we get into all this is the fact that the dieting, how long people actually do take. Like a lot of you guys are used to hearing about eight week diets, six week diets and all this nonsense. You've been going like what? But I think I think it's about twenty two weeks. Here you go. 22. So this is my longest prep ever because I've done twenty weeks before. Yeah. Now I did allow extra weeks because we had our honeymoon. Um, yeah, so you still kind of you did all right though. Yeah, Even no, I, way, still I, I, I maintained healthy. I maintained my weight on my honeymoon, yeah. and then we had Christmas as well, and I took like Christmas day off, and I took. And I didn't retake really any other days off. I had days where I went a bit over my macros, but the only day I actually took kind of off was Christmas Day. But I still yeah. felt really guilty. <laughs> you still enjoy chocolate yeah. and stuff, though. Yeah. But yeah, well, you're gonna you're gonna have a bit of guilt. But there so is that, I had that. There is that balance. You've got to have that balance. And there, but there you go. If you do like twenty week cuts, like is what we tend to do. We've always kind of done that. I used to, so I haven't competed for five years. I want to compete again this year, mainly just for the tube and the prep and to show you guys that you can do it you know, not eating chicken and broccoli, but also, even though I wasn't doing that, when we were doing body power and things, we would prep like we were going to a show. Yeah. Because for us at the time, body power was a big deal. So we've come through all that together. So we've come through doing the body powers and the expos, the growth of Gymshark, working together, doing all those. Um, so we've gone through dieting phases together. This is the first time I think you've, is it the first time you've dieted without me dieting alongside? No, I've done it. I've done a few where... Yeah. No, I've done a few where I've dieted along because I've got I've I've done oh, a no, lot of course. of course, you did the NABA one. Some of them I did diet alongside just as a a compassion diet, I'd say. Yeah, um, so I I did three competitions kind of before I even met you. Yeah. Then we did one that was just after I moved over here, and we had we were both super shreds for body power, and yeah, I had the competition that that. like four weeks later. So you kept on that dieting. Was that 2014 or 15, wasn't it? That was, was one year four we years ago peaked it so 2014 yeah. yeah we looked immense on that one yeah that was crazy and like that was and that was like 
on that one, we not only did dieting, but we did even did peak week and everything for body power. Oh, like we were ready to kill yeah, each other. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it was the worst. Yeah. Yeah. The car <laughs> journeys of death. There oh, was a point God. where Lex literally stopped the car and made me get out of the car because we were just like, we were so tattooed with each other. And he was just like, like back from the gym that time. Yeah. Like, I did I, not make you get out of the car. I don't know. I don't I'd know. I'd like what to, I'd like to spend, no. I don't let, know let's what just cover that. Even let's cover just, let's just, let's just, let's just check back to that lie you just told. <laughs> where. We were shouting to you so much that I pulled over in anger. Did the angry man pull over where you skid to a stop? Yeah. You oh, got out, called me the C word, <laughs> slammed the door, and proceeded to stroll off down a bypass, I might add, which has no path. <laughs> She's walking on a grass verge down a bypass <laughs> in the wrong direction to, to where we lived at the time. I only just <laughs> moved there, so I didn't even know where I was going. <laughs> but the best part of it was, like, I'm too nice to leave you. So what I did was do, go and did the angry man U-turn. Then the angry man crawl, window down, shout, get back in the car. To which point you was like, no, piss off. I'm sure it was much harsher language <laughs> and than piss off. Language, yeah, I'm, I'm, um, I'm taming it down a little bit. And um, yeah, we held up a bit of traffic until you eventually got back in the car, which pretty much is the only solution. So the whole argument is redundant. Then you get home. I can't yeah. even remember what that... It, it was probably about food, the argument, to be honest. Something, to timing stupid. or food or something later on in the day, yeah. a plan or whatever. That yeah, was it doesn't the, take much to keep people off That was the, the most stressful prep, though, for just, just generally because, number one, we prepped together. Yeah. And number two, I literally just quit my job and moved over. We were just started living yeah. together. So it was like everything was on top of me and I didn't have any of my... Yeah. normal support system right like you were taking the brunt of everything whereas anytime i prepped before that i had all my friends all my yeah, family no around outlets. me and like when you only have one person one outlet it can be such a high pressure it's like being in a pressure cooker like yeah. literally and when you've got when the other person has zero patience as well yeah it, just, it was not a yeah. good place to be so yeah if you're a couple and you're dieting together be well very <laughs> aware very very aware it does get awkward like in terms of that you're as you, as you get deeper into a diet, your patience dwindles along with your ability to concentrate, along with your ability to just, all those little things that annoy you about everyday life just seem worse. Everything seems worse. Yeah. You're ready, you're like, you're a bit like a ticking time bomb. And no matter how you do it, no matter how clever you do it, if you are cutting to an extreme level, like you are now for the yeah. show and things like, if you're cutting to that level, it's hard. Yeah. Like scientific done or not, it takes a lot of effort, it yeah. takes a lot of um patience and time on everyone's behalf so be aware of that even if you're doing macros and you can still eat yeah. ice cream and things, it doesn't matter you're still, you're still in a deficit, in a deficit. You, yeah. you're still not supporting those hormones that make you happy yeah that's true. and like it's not like i'm unhappy i'm not walking around like crying all the mm -hmm. time but a little thing can like like let's say they substitute the wrong thing on my <laughs> ass's delivery that could tick okay, but me that, off that's that's as well more because of your organizational skill so let's actually talk that's about just patience, that, that as well so yeah. let's talk, yes uh, if well, quick quick drop back again so prior to Lainey looking the way she does now Lainey was used to be you know nine to freaking nine job long ass hours doing your job working in a hospital hour as weeks. a 70 hour weeks working in a hospital as a blood analyst very high profile job. People literally die if you got something wrong. Can I just like, give my actual title? Because it's, yeah, it's not a blood analyst. That's um, it's um I was a biomedical scientist and I specialised in blood transfusion science. So literally if you give the wrong product out, it was a therapeutic lab rather than an analytic lab. So we actually treated the patients with a product, whereas all the rest of the labs is more testing the blood for something wrong with it whereas we were just testing the blood to make sure it was compatible so literally you give out a product if you gave the wrong product there was the potential that there could be a reaction and that reaction Talk is Talk that reaction is that the person would die it, it is like a <laughs> life or death yeah. situation so it was a high pressure job oh but God. i loved it because i love pressure and i love being organized and that's yeah. probably why I like bodybuilding and doing competitions because I yeah. love the pressure and the organization. And That's the kind of thing I want to get onto because yeah. with you, you went from almost a party lifestyle, work through the week, party through the weekend, mm. kind of grind through that Monday to get back to yeah. then do it all again next yeah. week. vicious cycle. Yeah. And so you, you put on a, a bit of weight, you decided you were unhappy with the way you looked mm -hmm. and you... Did you hire a coach to start with or just go to the gym straight away? You did, no, you did I, I already had gym membership, but I was one of these people who 
would like eat a Mars bar, calculate the calories in it, and then go and run that amount of calories on the treadmill. So there was no there was no structure to my training. There was no like weightlifting. It was like I was a cardio bunny. Like I was the typical girl who yeah. like ate shit all weekend and then un- couldn't understand why I was fat because I, I was so healthy during the week. Yes, so, standard yeah. way. It's like normal. That's like normal yeah. female behavior, I think. And then went from there to deciding to do a show. So how did you go from just starting the gym, from being party lifestyle, not training, and not really, you're not really like, well, you used to do dancing when you were younger, didn't you? Yeah, you I was never sporty. a sport. I was never athletic or sporty. No. Like, but, no matter what people, you know, people say oh, you're blessed with good genes. That's what a, a lot of people presume assume, yeah. that like anyone who steps on stage, oh yeah, they've got good genetics. I'm sorry, but like, no, I don't have good genetics. I had to work damn hard. And most people have to work damn hard to get on stage. So that's like myth busted there. There was no, no, no yeah. like. I think was, that's true with bodybuilding a lot of the time because you don't need a great sporting background yeah. to, to lift weights. You don't need to, but yeah. if you take a guy who is naturally sporty, like I, I am naturally quite sporty. If you gave me a sports as a kid, I picked it up relatively quickly. Yeah. Did things like when we went skiing on holidays, within a day, I was coming down the mountain on my own at like eight years old. So I'm kind of gifted in the sense that my I'm able to adapt to things quickly sports-wise, but then also on the flip side of it, I have the attention span of a cocker spaniel. Mm-hmm. And, you know, my organizational skills suck. So there's there's perks and downsides to everything. And when it comes to bodybuilding, each of those things are equally, I think, important. Yeah. So you can lack in that sporting side, but if you have the discipline like you do of the organization and the calculation, yeah. then you can have this this equal point of, of um, peak performance, I guess, yeah. between the both styles of people. I think with me, I like to be the best at everything I do. And when I grew up, like I tried basketball, I tried tennis, I tried like football, I tried every sport, like, and I, I just wasn't the best. Like I was okay at them, but I wasn't the best. So didn't do them because mm. I, I like to be like one of the best like I like to be coming like in like top three kind of thing and that's why I did ballet because there was no real competition you were just competing against yourself you did exams and things like that yeah. but it was no you weren't competing against the girls in your class yeah. so it was just like you went you had fun you performed you did a, a sport but yeah. there was no competitiveness so that's why I kind of did that so that's actually quite a good transition then if you're going from that style of thinking into a, a bodybuilding style yeah. because Really, you are only competing against yourself. And once you, but you see, on the flip side of it, for me, being sports, so I was, you know, football team, rugby team, went to yeah. uni, played rugby, basketball, did all that kind of jazz. Always, you want to win, 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 win. Mm. So then, when you go into bodybuilding, and all of a sudden, it's not as clean cut as like powerlifting, where yeah. if you can either lift the weight, you can't. It's very subjective. So it's very important to, and you learned this as well quite early on, yeah. because you, I remember, if you didn't win something and you thought you should have, it devastated you. I remember yeah. that first show. Like, I went into my first show and was, like, completely the underdog. No one knew who I was. I wasn't in the bodybuilding scene at all. i just come from nowhere and came second in my show in the Nationals in Ireland. Yeah. And no no one had a clue who I was. So I just stepped on stage, but no one could deny my physique. Like, I came out with, like, like an eight-pack. Like, my... my because yeah. my core is my best part of my body. And, like, I just came out with this banging six-pack and no one could deny it. So, like, they were, like... And you know this thing of, like... Oh, she has to pay her dues. I think all you got lucky though, because that does fucking exist. Like, yeah, hundred thousand percent. But so maybe you, that's why I didn't come first. Do you know what I mean? It could have been, or you know, so because like no one could deny my physique, so I came second. That's good though. You're lucky on that because yeah. I've seen shows where, well, like that one we went to. And in fact, let's. What, what was that one we went to? The world's what was that Nab? What Nab was that? World. So you went to Nab Worlds. I remember that genuinely. Genuinely the worst show I've ever seen in my life, decision-wise. The entire crowd, bearing in mind, like, you know one guy up on that stage. So you don't know someone in every category. The entire crowd booed pretty much every category decision. Mm. Even, like, we stayed to watch the rest of the show, and it was despicable. The decisions on there were horrendous. And that was worlds. And then we found out that that was because they had, was it Brazilians who came over for that? Yeah, it was something like that, because it was like, it was international, yeah. so. And we found out, what happens is, these Brazilians come over to compete in the show, they pay a shitload of money for each competitor to come and compete in the show, and because Anaba wanted that money, that's what we found yeah. out afterwards, um, they placed these people, oh, regardless. Like every category. You went back through the categories, there was a Brazilian in every single top yeah. three. It was, dis- it was off. The worst one I saw, was the classic men's physique. There was a guy in that 
he was, oh, it was, was it, it wasn't classics, was it Masters? It was living Masters at that no. time. There were two guys. There was this big band over bloke with a big bubble gut. His waist was thicker than like his hips, you know, that kind of thing. Just that roider shredded look. But a, fair enough, like he was an old guy and fair enough, like incredible for what his physique, but distorted, looked a bit Palumbo or whatever. Then there was this other black guy who was just this perfect, classic, Mensa style shape. Like on stage with glasses, just looking dope as fuck. You looked at him, you thought, I want to look like that guy. And he got beat by the big bloated barn door. And I remember that was when we left the actual show that day. Yeah. And we went and got Eddie Rockets. Oh no, we went to some amazing place in Belfast that time. Yeah? Yeah. That's always the big thing, isn't it? What did you do after the show? Yeah. What's your favourite meal after the shows? Like I remember us registering for that show the day before. And then we registered and then walked around Belfast looking for the best place to eat. Because I was like, oh, I have to decide where I'm going to eat tomorrow evening. So... But yeah, like there's always going to be issues with, um, you know, politics and stuff when it comes to bodybuilding. Well, I don't even think it's politics. I think it's just subjective bullshit. Yeah. So. But you, you just don't know where. Like I, I have everyone like on my social media going, "Oh my god, you're gonna win! You have to win!" Yeah, blah, they blah. Say that, like, and like that, <laughs> that's great. Like, but then yeah. at the same time, then I'm like, how does that make me feel if I don't win? Because I'm like, oh, are they all gonna be disappointed? And then at the end of the day, I don't know who is going to come in on the day and have a better physique. Like, it doesn't matter how hard I can, I train, it doesn't yeah. how hard I diet, how much work I put in, blood, sweat and tears. It doesn't matter because on the day, someone else can come in with a better physique and that's not their fault and it's not my fault. It doesn't take away from what I've done. And that was a hard lesson for me to learn that like me not doing well isn't, you know, it doesn't mean that I didn't put in the work and it doesn't mean that I didn't put in the effort and I think that's why some people get so focused on winning I remember that show where I came I came sixth and I was determined to win and I came sixth which is not a bad placing but I just had it in my head that I wanted to win but then the five girls who placed ahead of me they deserved it like they did yeah. I wasn't the physique they were looking for on the day yeah. and I still placed top six even though I was completely different to the other girls I had way bigger legs I just looked completely different to them but they still put me in the top six which is good but I just couldn't see it that way. I was just like, I didn't win. I did it wrong. What did I do wrong? All I was thinking in my head was, I did it wrong. What did... And I was so gutted that I swore to you after that. I was like, I'm never, ever setting my sights on winning again. Yeah. Like, it is good. Like, I'd never they give me a trophy and say, you win. I'm not going to go, you know what? Give it to her. She deserves <laughs> it more. I'm going to take no, it and be I delighted. Think this is the big thing. So if you are thinking yeah. of competing this year, if you are doing it, just remember, like, it is basically an opinion. That decision yeah. at the end of the day. And you can argue it all you want or you can stand there and it can be a good opinion or it can be a bad opinion mm. it's just look at the draw with the judges the federation and so all you can do is pick the fairest federation that you hear about and that's that's your best kind of goal and then as long as you come in knowing you've come in the best you can if you made mistakes along the way then you fix them next time yeah and that's kind of how you have to be and that's the bodybuilding world ladies and gentlemen so laney will be competing this is it sunday this sunday the 8th of April. in where is it Litchfield. Litchfield. So it's north of Birmingham. And we uh, we did put this out. Apparently the show's sold out already, tickets-wise, which is crazy. Which also shows kind of the quality of the show that we're kind of going for, which is good as well. Yeah. But we didn't know that it was sold out. So um, apparently, I'll put all the details for the show in the descriptions here, if people are in the area. They do apparently release tickets back onto the door on the night. So say there's been a, a people come out and do the category. People tend to watch the category and then leave. So, um, then tickets get re -released they, they get re-released back to the door. So Lainey isn't on luckily until later on. Yeah. But and, um, I was talking to one of the girls who advised me that apparently like the figure category, uh, women's figure category is a big pull for a lot of people to go and watch and they're on second and I'm on like fourth or something. So, um, like category wise. Yeah. Um, so when they, there'll be a mass exodus when the figure category leave, there'll be a lot of people leave. Yeah. So I'm in the evening. So if any fan one's fancies coming down. And yep. There supporting. we go. I'll put the details in the description anyway. And obviously we'll talk about this in upcoming videos on, on the U of tube, um, as we go on. Uh, but that's it. That's, that's an update for what's going on in our house. So yep. Dieting's going well. She's looking tremendous. Thanks. Actually one of the best I think I've seen you look so far. Yeah. Uh, definitely in terms of like the consistency of the way the diets run yeah it's been and good. like uh, i used to struggle with like peanut butter in previous preps i know that sounds stupid but like that was my like downfall was that like literally like 
peanut butter fingers, I'd go into the pantry <laughs> and just be like, "Yeah, you were." I and I wouldn't caught, count it. Like. I once left a GoPro running. Oh yeah, <laughs> we were in the old other house. I left the GoPro running whilst we went out for forty minutes. So I wanted to see what Roxy, our pug, got up to while we we're out. And um, as I put it down, let it go, and somebody came back in. Lainey forgot I'd done this, and so I came straight in, grabbed the GoPro, took the, the card out, and went upstairs to see it on the computer. Josh, you're still unpacking the car at this point. I scan through quickly, get to the end. Lainey comes in. I'm still out in the car, getting things in their bags and ready. She walks through the door, through to the back of the, the kitchen, into the pantry, the like big uh, slide out cupboard thing we had at the time. <laughs> see her. She said, yes. Yeah, you look down through, because you could see the front door from the yeah, kitchen where we used to live. And she looked down to the front door to see if I was coming yet. Quickly undoes the peanut butter, takes one little finger, puts it in her mouth, looks back towards the door, and quickly back in for another little finger. And then, and obviously, she then her head darts up because I start must start coming in the house. Quickly screws it back on and puts it in the cupboard. <laughs> And I remember, I saw it from downstairs and you're still downstairs unpacking because it literally took like three minutes to see this footage. And I shout down from upstairs going, oh, I had some peanut butter, did you? <laughs> and all I got from downstairs was, how, what, how did you know? <laughs> yeah, completely busted. Yeah. That's just one of those things. It's like a mental um, boundary breaker, isn't it, I guess? Yeah. There's those points. You I just... think there's every, something changes with every prep. And that was one thing that I only have had one point where I or maybe two points where I went over my macro and like didn't hit my macros and like in 22 weeks to have two times where you don't hit your macros yeah. for me that's a victory like that's me winning like it's winning in my head mentally is that I, I can do this I've gotten over this kind of feeling that I have to eat everything I think the thing the, the main thing is when you're on a diet is it can bring out like that the weakest uh, the weakest version of you sometimes yeah. like i remember one of my friends kev if you're listening I, i'm telling you a story i remember we were that he was he did the bnbf one year i think we did it it was the first time i did a, a show and i did she jumped in six weeks and i only did it just to see like to go through the rigmarole of getting through a show and seeing what it entailed so i could then do a proper diet for one later on and um i met a guy called kev and we were telling stories about his diet he got to a point and he did it like quite bro so hard lots of cardio little food he said he was in the house on his own and he was cleaning up and he <laughs> he saw a pistachio on the floor and he literally he said he was in the house on his own and he looked around and he said i ate that pistachio off the floor and i'm not even sorry about it he said i just it was a moment it just in his he said he ate it and then he stood there and just thought you just ate a floor nut you you literally got so low and so desperate for food you ate a floor nut yeah. And that is that is where a diet can put you. I once ate a whole pan of burnt chicken breasts. Oh yeah, like yeah, twelve just... chicken breasts that I'd left in the oven too long that I was prepping, and they were completely burned, and like just like covered in charcoal from being in the oven too long. And I just sat there and ate them all, like twelve chicken breasts, because I don't I don't even know why. I was just kind of like it's only chicken. I didn't even it. feel like it was ruining my diet, but it just shows how, just like, the, mentally... Yeah. It just, I didn't feel guilty around, because I just still felt like, oh, it's only chicken. But at the same time, they were burnt. They didn't even taste that good. They were dry and burnt, but I still ate them. Yeah. It's a weird place to be. Yeah. It puts your mind in a weird place. And I think there's a very, very fine line between dedication to a diet and an eating disorder. Yeah. And that is something I want to cover now, because Definitely. if you restrict yourself and this is day to day so now we're, we're talking we're getting outside of bodybuilding here and we're just talking about people who diet in general yeah. if you cut things out of your diet or deem them as bad or not allowed things like that you are creating a negative relationship with food and if you do that i guarantee all that will happen is that negativity will build up over time mm -hmm. and it'll break you and this is why people fail on diets because if you deny yourself you're going to want it more it's human nature we're, we're mm -hmm. weak like that and you can get to a point where not only have you denied yourself food, but you can get to a point where if you then eat that food out of, I don't know, you can't call it gluttony because you're denying it. If you eat it out of kind of just an overwhelming urge to do so and you break and you have that food and then you have this immense guilt for eating it afterwards. Mm. So the, that's the point where people can either spit the food out of their mouth as they're eating it or it then crosses over that boundary line to the guilt sits with them for so long they're going to throw it up. And it's that's called, where we there's start. There's a term for um, 
a need for clean eating and like having good and bad foods. It's like it's recognized by the World Health Organization and it's called orthorexia. And it's literally where you are obsessed with eating clean, healthy food to the point where like you let either binge or, you know, um, throw up or use laxatives and stuff. Because it is just another form. Of, eating disorder. Yeah. And it is. It's an obsession with clean eating. And that has probably it probably did originate with bodybuilding because where did clean eating come from like the word clean like it didn't come from no it's a really bad way so i mean what are yeah. you doing are you washing your food with soap yeah you know is it you know do it's you not eat carrots because they come out of the ground as well it's ridiculous there's no such thing as clean food yeah like especially in the world unless you own a farm you rear and kill your own food uh, grow and and cultivate your own vegetables and fruit you are eating technically if you want to go clean, unclean, unclean food, because it's all processed, it's all manufactured, it's all mass produced. Yeah. So there is no such thing as clean food. There's only such things as nutritional impact of a food that you eat. Now, yeah, you can talk about the health values of food. That's certainly a thing. We're not saying that things aren't unhealthy for you. Like 100% massively processed chocolate yeah. and sweets like that, if you eat them in excess, are unhealthy. But they're only unhealthy because they're high impact. Yeah. That's so like it's, them, it's, it's one thing effect. that gets confused. People think that IIFYM, which is if it fits your macros, is um, all about eating pop tarts and eating chocolate, and because no. that's how it started. Yeah. Because people were the way it was advertised, I suppose, by like you know, like the pioneers, like Matt Ovis and stuff, was that hey, look, I can eat this pop tart. But what you don't see is that realistically, most of us who um, follow macro based diets we have very wholesome food because you want to get the most out of your food so mm. if you eat a mcdonald's burger fair enough it fit your macros but then you're kind of screwing yourself for the day so you're not going to do that but you can do it that's the whole thing that it gives you the option that you can have frozen yogurt or you can have yeah. like some of the healthy ice creams and it's not going to ruin your prep you can have chocolate it's not going to yeah. ruin your prep you just have to factor it in and if you're really craving chocolate you can have it and it's not going to ruin your prep and uh, that's what the that's creating that positive relationship yeah. again with food is as well is realizing you have the control yeah. over that choice so you have this overwhelming urge to eat your floor nut yeah you can eat that floor nut you pick that nut up yeah. off the floor and you nom nom it down yeah. you log it there's no guilt associated with yeah. it because you have control over yeah. it well, you saw it last That's night. What it is. Um, yesterday was Easter Sunday, and I got Lex a chocolate orange Easter egg, and I wanted him to enjoy some of the Easter egg. And he was like, "No, I don't want to have it because I feel bad. On you know, I feel bad eating all this in front of you on Easter Sunday when you can't have it." So I was like, "You know what? I can probably factor something in." So I had like little Reese's, like Reese's my little bunny. Reese, my little Reese's bunny. Yeah. I was able to factor that in so that Lex could eat his chocolate orange <laughs> egg. And like we could eat together and not have him, like, because that's another thing that, like, him as my partner felt guilty about eating the food in front I of me. I didn't feel guilty. It's just, I just I've felt been, bad. Been, not even feeling bad. I was just sensitive to the situation. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you just, I didn't really care whether I had the chocolate then or there or not. Yeah. So I thought, I'll wait until we can enjoy it together. Yeah. But then we created, instead of rather than putting that moment off, and we like, had the control to allow that moment to happen the as thing it was, would normally. I was on like, as a depletion day yesterday on yep, extremely on low, low carbs day. and I still managed to fit that in yep. because I was smart with my food I and I had like good wholesome food yesterday like I just lovely food and um I still managed to fit that in so it just shows that and again I don't feel guilty about it at all because it fit my macros like, oh yeah no it, it doesn't 100%. like I'm not like suddenly fat I don't have like a little reester bunny lump of fat somewhere on my body <laughs> yeah because which is the big thing macros. a lot of people used yeah. to think that used to, a lot of people used to think that literally you eat a Mars bar and it would go to a certain part of your body because that yeah. was your problem area and people used to believe that kind of thing so <clears throat> it's very important that you understand if you're going into this diet because we are coming towards summer we're coming towards that time now you need to pee yeah. you go pee I'll hold the fort <clears throat> you go so yeah, I'll carry on with this. What you need to understand is if you are coming into this kind of summer diet phase now where you're thinking you want to start making changes, you want to start losing weight, start looking up macronutrients. Understand what they are before you do anything else. Also understand this. You can sit on your ass and lose weight if your calories and the breakdown of those calories are calculated correctly. So it's not all about exercising until you die, exercising until you throw up, sacrifice and all that nonsense. To get in shape, it's a simple scientific equation of calories in versus calories out and then the breakdown of those calories so that you can live a normal lifestyle, like how you fit them into each meal 
That was the quickest pee in the world. Did you even, did you just pee in the hole? I drank three liters of water today. It's just flowing out of me. Um, so yeah, look up the macronutrients and understand these things first off because it sounds like an overwhelming task to um, monitor your food. Now, we weigh our food. And when you get used to doing that, it's as simple as putting a plate on a scale rather than putting your plate on just the kitchen cabinet. I do it out of habit now. It's like, yeah. I just I put everything on a scale, even if I don't need to. Like sometimes I, you know, when you have like the portioned out like rice or something, so you don't actually have to weigh it. Yeah. I still put the bowl on and still weigh it, yeah. even though I know that it's like 100 grams. It's yeah. So like... And it doesn't have to be perfect as well. So say you get 98 grams or 103 grams instead of 100. That's fine. Okay, that's not going to make a huge difference. So when you do get into weighing things, don't be like I used to be like literally picking Rice Krispies out of the bowl to get. I it still to, do that. To be honest, that's just you being OCD with your little numbers yeah. though. But you have to understand as long as you're within that kind of five ten percent range of your targets, that consistency over time will pay off. But what you need to understand is that if you don't, if you aren't monitoring your food in some way, then you have no control. So if you don't want to weigh your food. That's fine, but get some kind of measuring device. So go with the, you know, a cup of measurements. Just have something so that there's consistency. Um, now, if you weigh your food on a scale, you have freedom, which means every meal can be different and it, because everything's being monitored. If you're not willing to do that, this is when it be, can become a little bit more boring because you're not monitoring things so directly. You do need to have more consistency in your meals size and structure each day so that then if something isn't going right like your weight isn't dropping like you want or isn't going up like you want then you can adjust single meals at a time because they're all the same you just adjust one a little bit different then you see how that impacts yeah. but that's the only way you, you have to do that if you're not willing to weigh your food if you're willing to weigh your food every meal can be anything you want as long as it fits your numbers mm. so that's kind of how you break it down and we could talk for hours on this i'm not going to today because what we're going to do is um laney and you just filmed didn't you just film a full day of eating Yes, and it was a low carb. I have it up on my YouTube now. It's up, up now. already. Yeah, it okay. will be up so at we'll, five now. We'll, yeah, we'll link that in the description, um, so you can go watch that now after listening to this, and um, that will give you an idea. I'm going to do some full days of eating for bloke, yeah. um, which will have more blokey things yeah. in it and a lot less um, tasty meals. <laughs> yeah. well, mine, uh, my one from yesterday was like an extreme depletion low day, but then I also in my prep series have like high carb days to show the difference, and now they're not like super crazy high carb no. days they're like competition higher carb yeah, yeah. days so don't be fooled by the terms yeah but and we're not, just, it gives you an idea of food to eat and yeah stuff. and we're not making out that like you know these di competition diets are normal they're not you shouldn't be doing a competition diet just to look good to go on the beach this is extreme this is like the extreme end of the scale like anything um but it's it's just the way of pushing things safely to that extreme end and to realize that you know we're not like this all the time um and so we'll, we will do full days of eating. So stick on the YouTube. Make sure you also subscribe to Lainey's Kitchen, which is her new cooking channel. This is dedicated literally <coughs> to recipes and nothing else. <coughs> yeah. So if you've been watching my Insta stories and things like that, you'll have seen the carrot cake muffins, protein carrot cake muffins, the cinnabons, the... Um, what else have we had going on there? Oh, yeah, the red velvet one we had there, uh, the banana breads, the lovely coffees that we have with oatmeal and all these crazy things. Lainey shows you how to make a lot of these things on that channel. So make sure you're checking that out. Links will be below. And I think that's enough of talking about that now. So let's go on to the next one because some, one of you guys brought this up and I think it's a really cool subject. Hitting on girls at the gym. So <laughs> I want to, Right. So we got a, we got a question about... Um, Basically, if you're single and you're going to the gym, is it cool to hit on girls when you're there? And even, like, I flip it the other way, vice versa. Is it cool for girls to hit on guys at the gym? Because you can't just do it one way. Everything's, you know, we're talking about equality now and everything. Um, now, I would say five, six years ago, it was maybe a little bit weird. But personally, now fitness is fashionable. You know, it's cool to have abs and all that. I think a gym is more of a social environment than it ever was. Mm. And I think you can meet people at the gym. Yeah. But how do you go about it? So as a girl, what don't you want to happen? I think like if you see a girl at the gym that you fancy and you Just know she's single or whatever, I think... Get a notepad, guys, get a notepad. Here we go. <laughs> Let's go. I think the appropriate thing to do is not do it at the gym because you don't know how they're going to react at the gym. Okay, but, she, but then she leaves the gym, you don't know who she is. 
you find her on Instagram, sorry. So you, you, what? Really? Yeah, you just like, you find that girl on Instagram, ask her friend about her, do something, but I would not, or maybe like even leave her a note at reception at the gym, something like that. Ask them at reception who she is. But I would not approach someone in the gym because this is me personally now. I just think it, it makes someone feel uncomfortable if, number one, she mightn't fancy it. And then like she's left with this situation of this guy coming up to her in the gym and hitting on her when she's like, uh, really okay, don't. but that's what we're talking you have about. A lot but of maybe he doesn't things. go up and hit on her. Maybe he just goes up and chats. So maybe to you know, test the waters. So when would he do that? So like, we're going to bank on the fact that we're going to, as guys, we're going to get blown out every so often. We're mm. going to take that risk. So what's the best way of taking that risk? I would not do it while she's squatting. <laughs> and <laughs> I would. You on a bench. I would not go up. <laughs> mid set when she's in the middle of something stare at her while she's doing it and then approach her because already she's thinking creepy guy okay straight away she's yeah. just thinking that's that creepy guy that keeps on staring at me every time i do a bicep crowd or something you just you get a negative connotation with it i would wait until either she maybe go up and go oh do you have many sets left on that if she seems like friendly and she's like oh i've got two sets left and then you can kind of awkwardly stand beside her for her two sets or come back when she's done or she might have to come to you to say hey i'm finished with that there's your opening there's no exercise being done so you have an opening exercise is over you're switching machines yeah so maybe maybe like go. help her with like unloading the weights uh, or yep, putting her yeah, you there was go, a yeah. guy did it for me the other day i'm not saying he was hitting on me he was just a nice guy yeah. and he helped me take the weights off like the hack squat and i was just like that is so nice because it hasn't been done and he wasn't doing it in a condescending way like of like oh you're not strong enough to take these weights <laughs> off he was yeah. just being a gentleman and taking the weights off yeah. and I just thought it was really nice of him and so even though we're yeah. at a gym the girls are not necessarily looking for this buff you know yeah, hero nice type guy. guy still looking for just a nice guy yeah you're looking at the end of the day a woman is looking for a gentleman not someone who's going to be rude weird and creepy you want someone who's a gentleman. Do you know what would help with that, without that stereotype? Is if girls would stop dating the rude, creepy guys and blowing out the nice guys. Mm. Yeah. But sometimes we <laughs> fall in love with the rude, creepy guys. <laughs> well played, well played. No. But so, no, yeah, I, I no, think I there is a lot, a lot to be said for chivalry in the gym and just being like, be polite. Like, there was a guy who also came up to me. I remember I was telling you about this. And I didn't know whether I was overreacting because I was on a diet. But I was mid-bicep curl and he came and touched my arm. And I'm like, don't touch me. <laughs> and like, it was like, he was like, yeah, you can ho put it down further. Kind of like, he wanted me to like. Yeah, you see, I was, I was in like, two minds. You were super pissed when you came in about this. You were like, this guy touched me. I understand that, yeah, shouldn't be touching people. Number one, he was really creepy. Don't go and touch other people in the gym yeah. without their permission. I mean, this is a standard rule. Yeah. But I also think, I think it was done with good intent in a bad way. I think maybe I he was just, he was just a little bit excited to maybe, maybe he recognized you, maybe he didn't, but maybe he was just excited to maybe help somebody he thought he could help. You know, and it, and you maybe get any thought, I'm going to get great positive response from this. I think one Went thing... Went the wrong way. <laughs> I think one thing you should never do to a girl, if you want to chat to her, don't correct her training. Just don't. Yeah. It's like straight away, you're insulting her. Whether you, you fancy her or not, you go up and tell oh, her yeah. she's doing something, something wrong. I can tell you something here, guys. This is one I've learned over the years. Do not correct three sisters, someone's Three training. sisters and Alini. Um, <laughs> with, with the ladies, guys, it is way better... If you start with a positive, with a compliment, before going into saying what you wanted to say about changing something, yeah. So I've so like with blokes, we're super easy. You go up to another guy and you're like, you just point out immediately. You just go, you're moving your elbows too much. Pin them to the side, and they'll go what like this, and you go yeah, and they go oh yeah, cheers mate. And that's kind of how a guy interaction works. Can't do it with the girl. Got to go up to the girl and go. Biceps are looking really good. You know what could help emphasize just a little bit, which will get you more from your exercise? Just at the bottom, you're not letting the elbows um, extend fully. Just give that a go on your next set and see how that feels. That's how you have to do the difference. Mm. And that takes a lot of thought process for a bloke. Yeah. But I'm telling you, you go up and yes. insult a woman, whether you're trying to, you think you're, I know, I'll go and tell her that if she does this on her squat, then she'll be really into me. No, she's going to think you're a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Straight away, you're going to be like, who asked you? Yeah. So there's, there you go. Compliment first then positive reinforcement of the change. Yeah. That's what I've learned over the years. I think with women, if a woman wants to hit on a guy at the gym, wh 
what you could do oh, so is, easy yeah you just go up to a guy and just say hey could you help me with this i'm really i'm, I'm just, struggling with my squad i don't know do what that. i'm doing don't right. into that just just walk over yeah. that's pretty much it <laughs> and you're in <laughs> just being like equal in like it's, it's, given it's women such tips. a different world it's I think a, a guy world. would probably have a heart attack if he got but, hit on at but, the gym so we're agreeing it is a place where you could yeah. essentially well like number one you have one thing in common straight away you both go to the gym this is true what You're about what fitness. about okay now you, you can fill me on this what about the girls who you see on the treadmill not really treadmilling face full of makeup hair done and in there to work out they are there to work out are they I'm there, to, are they there no, to get hit on I, I think that's like, you can't, you can't make that assumption just because I go to the gym. Do I ever go to the gym with no makeup on or my hair in No, like... but you get sweaty and you, you dig in. I know, but it doesn't matter. I still make an effort because at the end of the day, um, a gym can be an extremely intimidating place for a woman. So if she wants to put on a face full of makeup to make herself feel good, to get herself into the gym, who are you to say, so oh, she's, she's just so, there to so get hit on? So she's not there to get just hit on? No. I right, think so, that a lot so of times So she's women... up, hair done. Yeah. yeah. Don't take that as a sign that she is there to meet. No, you. it's because I, she... I, honestly, I, as a bloke, if I saw a girl doing that, you think she's here to meet someone because she's dolled up. But I know that again, it's probably uh, not with the case. women with makeup, makeup, and like it's your mask, and it's your it makes you feel a lot more confident. I know, like I just don't, I don't, I'd hate to meet someone in the gym if I had no makeup on and like a baseball cap on, greasy hair. If I met like a subscriber or something, I'd be mortified and that's why i always make an effort because I, I i i could potentially meet someone like a subscriber or something then they go laney griffin looks shit <laughs> and i'm just like i yeah. don't want i don't want to have that so i'm always like feeling a hell of a like i do occasionally go with no i'd say bomb, maybe but... i think i probably um i would agree completely and it it's is understandable confidence. i'd also say that a lot of girls you still have to be aware guys a lot of girls are still under the impression that if they lift weights they're going to get big and muscular because we live in this bubble now, and a lot of you, if you're following fitness and you've been in fitness a long time, you know you 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 know that these myths are nonsense. That you know, but a lot of people going to the gym still live live under the assumption that all these things are true. That muscle can turn to fat. That women will get big if they lift weights. You know, and the only way to diet is chicken and broccoli. So live under the assumption that maybe that girl is only on the treadmill because she thinks that's the only place she's going to be able to be to the get day. the body she wants. She's not lifting the weights because she thinks she's going to get too big, not because she doesn't want to lift the weights and yeah. things like that. And I think that's a misconception is, is when you see the old up girl on the treadmill that she's not really I allowed to work to out. I used to be that girl to... on the treadmill and I think everyone starts somewhere. I would never, you know, like someone had, I, I put up an Insta story one day and it was me training, but in the background there was a guy doing push-ups and all I got was a load of DMs laughing at the guy doing push-ups behind me because he was doing like he looked a bit silly he wasn't doing proper form and everything and you know what i replied to every single person at least he's in there trying yeah that's it, Is it? that's I'm like it. who are you to judge someone very true if you're in the gym they're not in mcdonald's yep. they're not in starbucks they're yep. not on you know instagram they're in the gym they're doing something and who are you to comment on anyone because you don't know where they are in their journey like you see someone who's overweight like you've always said you see someone who's like 15 stone or something you don't know that they weren't 20 stone yeah. a couple of weeks ago yeah. or a couple of months ago. And I had to change that mentality about myself yeah. because I used to jump. You make you know, assumptions. You do. You make, well, yeah. you, I mean, there's a point of an assumption. There's a point of reality. But the reality is they may be overweight, but you don't know how overweight they were, how much more overweight they used to be. You don't know where they are in their journey. And um, I used to be the same. I used to just be anti, you know, more more like because I'd watch all these programs where people are eating themselves to death and things like yeah. that, and then you kind of tie everyone with the same brush. Yeah. A lot of people, it's it's bad relationships with food, it's bad relationships with people, it's confidence issues. Yeah. There's a whole host of things that can be going wrong. So, you know, it is very true. If someone's in the gym working, fucking kudos to that person. Give yeah. them props. Fucking help them. Like, reach out. Give them, give them a confidence boost. Do that thing of the positive reinforcement with the positive correction, like yeah. you would do to hit on the girl. It, that same positivity you give to them, give it to somebody else as well. In that same respect, and I had to do that. Mis I had to do it self personally. I was very bad because um, I just I used to yeah you see that thing in the gym where I assume someone's story before knowing them, and often yeah. when you meet that person, you would have to eat your own words and kind of you. Um, but even accept. from being with me. Like, you, you have always been in good shape. Like, you have never been in bad shape. Like, no. you've never been overweight. Whereas I have come from a place where I have been miserable and overweight. And I think 
me talking to you about it and explaining to you like you know it's it's hard for someone who like I'm in shape now but I literally have body dysmorphia as in I still will pick up a pair of jeans that would have been oh, my yeah, old yeah, size yeah. and think like I could never pick up a size six pair of jeans and go they'll fit me I have to actually force myself to do it because I was never that size I was never yeah. I was never like a small fit person until I was in my 30s yeah. and that's just like so it's hard to change your entire life I don't think you ever I think you, I think you get better with dealing with it I don't think you ever overcome it fully no definitely um, but not. I also don't think that's a bad thing because I think that's what keeps no, the drive alive I think it does yeah it definitely does because I, I never want to be that person again not just the body shape that's it's the mindset yeah. I never want to go back to being that person who in my head was lazy yeah. like all I wanted to do finish work go home eat dinner watch TV go to bed that was my cycle yeah whereas you know like people are like oh you're great for going to the gym the gym is not something great that I do. It's not like I'm going to win a Nobel Prize for it, but it's something that I enjoy. I do it regardless. It's not... And it's a positive it's, impact. It's never a hardship for me to go to the gym. There's some days where I'm just like, oh man, I have to go tra train legs. But at the same time, I still feel better when I do it. Watch and it's training. like, if I try and take a week off the gym, you know, fair enough, take three or four days off, I'd be okay. But take a week off, I'm going to stir crazy by the fifth day. I'm like... I need to go train because I love it. Yeah. It's part of my life. And the hardest part of going to the gym most of the time is the sofa to the gym door. Yeah. That journey there. That's often harder than your workout. If you I can overcome go, that. I used to just go on autopilot every single day straight from work. Straight to the from gym. work. That is it. Yeah. If you, Don't one thing home. I can tell you. Bring a when, snack with you. When I used to do the property thing, I was in the offices. I used to go straight from the office. So I started the office at eight. I didn't finish till six. And I would go straight from the office to the gym because yeah. if I went home and sat down, yeah. I was not going back up. No. You just oh, procrastinate. I I see tired. people in the gym the odd time when I'd work late and I go into the gym at half seven rather than my half five. Yeah. And I go in and I'd be like, there's a completely different crowd in there oh, for yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. And true. then I'm just like, they probably went home first, <laughs> had their dinner, and they, and it just baffled me. It's, it is, it makes it twice as hard because yeah. you've got to you've got, you've got like, that double thing of finishing I'm just work. Comfy. Then you get home and you've got to finish being comfy at home to then restart that. That, oh, you're already up you're already at work you're already active you're already out the house don't yeah. go back to the house make the your home the end part of your day yeah. and then you can relax as well once you're in the house you yeah. can actually relax and you, start you to decompress you just have to make it like that it's not a chore that it's just part of your day and you don't yeah. have to go every single day like four if you go three times three a week times four a times a week, week anything yeah. Yeah. even if you only go once a week uh, one week you still gone once. You haven't gone zero times. Yeah, just you do better the next yeah. week. Every I was saying this today. Every little win that you like, we we have this all or nothing mentality in society yeah. at the moment. It's like I want I want a million pounds on Lamborghinis, and you know, the sat on the ass, not not even making an effort to to get that standard paying mm -hmm. job or that do something that gives them a standard income. They want to go from zero to hero. It doesn't work like that. Everybody has to pay the dues. Everybody has to dig in and you have to create your own success. And it applies to every single thing. And these little wins that you create along the way build up over time to a big victory. Yeah. So it's the little wins that count and people try and jump, they try and, they try and yeah. hop it and skip it. It doesn't work. I also like, work. I think as a woman, you get the whole... Um, I get like a lot of girls saying, oh, I just want to look like you. And I'm like, why can't you just look like a better version of yourself? Yeah. I'm like, and I, I just don't like that whole, it upsets me from people. I, I know it's a compliment and that they're saying you look yeah. amazing. But I don't like it when girls literally are like, oh, I, I killed, and I, I think, killed to I look think, like I think you. people literally do want to look like somebody else. Like, yeah. And I say this all the time is you can't compare yourself to somebody else mm. because this whole, again, all or nothing nonsense. Like we, we assume like, Somebody once said genetics don't don't matter. Of course they fucking matter. Genetics dictate the color of your hair, your eyes, your height, your insertion points of all your muscles. And that all dictates how you're going to look as an overall package. Yeah. You know, your ethnicity alone can change the way you look. Yeah. Look at like people like Ogus compared to me. Ogus's skin is this like beautiful, hairless, like olive colored all the time, tight skin. You know what I mean? I'm lucky I have tan and I have nice skin, but it's not the same tightness. Same with Ross Dickerson. What you guys don't know about that guy is you try and pinch Ross's skin anywhere on his body. It's like trying to pinch your forearm skin. It's like that everywhere on him. It's just his genetically, he's got very, his skin is tight on his yeah. body. It's just not, just, just not, but it's, like, it's either massively, yeah. not elastic or over, I don't know. It's yeah. just hard. So he will then look leaner all year round because the muscle's constantly being Pulled, the skin's taller over the muscle yeah. than the normal guy who has you know normal elasticity of skin it's the same with women as well it's like I get a lot of obviously like my abs are the best thing on my body and I get a lot of questions of ah oh, how can I how get your you abs yeah. and I'm like 
I don't want to discourage anyone from training abs or having the yeah. goal of having abs, but abs aren't everything. Like they, these girls who are messaging me probably have amazing legs and I'd be like, I kill, I kill for your feelings. legs. Yeah. And like me and Nikki literally had this conversation before. Cause like Nikki obviously has the amazing bubble butt. She's just like, she's a beautiful butt. She has a beautiful butt, I've said. <laughs> and um, I've got like the really small, like small waist with the abs. Yeah. And she's like, oh, if I had your abs, I'd wear crop tops every day. And I'm like, if I had your butt, I'd wear like hot pants every yeah. day. And that was just like literally a conversation <laughs> that we had one That's day. That's a big thing for guys as well. I think it's become more of a, a thing for guys. We've got obviously these fellas who have like 28 inch waist just naturally. So they have this long kind of tapered midsection. Yeah. If you don't have that, you cannot train that in. Yeah. It's just it's not how you are. If you don't have that natural twenty eight inch waist, outside of the realms of wearing corsets and bullshit like that, just don't worry about it. Don't fucking worry about it. Play yeah. to your strengths. Train. You know, make your good bits better and make your weak points your good points. That's yeah. your overall goal, and your body will develop how you develop it. Yes, to a certain extent, with bodybuilding, you can sculpt the shape, but don't be trying to create. You can a, get obsessed with it. Yeah, don't yeah. try and create a, a body a body shape that you don't own genetically. It's, you're going to, inevitably, it's that, it's going to be a fail. You're going to fall off because you're not going to succeed because you're not going to reach that goal because it's impossible. And it, like, that will affect your confidence as well, coming back to like, getting on stage and stuff because of course, like yeah. let's say for me I have like quite big quads and stuff and then like in bikini they don't like the big quads do you know what no, I mean and yeah. it's like well there's nothing I can do about that so now for a while I just stopped training them I stopped training quads and it was the stupidest thing yeah. I ever did because instead of them looking full and toned they just look flat and flabby and so when I started training them again yeah they got a bit bigger but now they look awesome and I'm like I'm never going to listen to the thing of like detraining yourself if you no. have good like big quads train I, them honestly I, I almost remember I had that point where I nearly stopped training shoulders yeah because my shoulders are such a good point on me with my traps and it started to think that I, they were getting too much attention yeah. do you remember and I was getting annoyed with it like people constantly assuming that I was taking drugs because I had good shoulders yeah and um, and I remember you sat there and went no fuck them yeah fuck them you're going to let them make dictate you your di body. yeah dictate how you look because because they say yeah. this one thing and, you, and you're sick of having attention drawn to you're like fuck that train them more get more yeah. attention for them show them what's possible yeah and it's very true like i nearly was affected by that at the time because it was just it was a little bit overwhelming but it, fuck other people's opinions on things don't that, let them dictate where, where you run your life though can become that was when i was uh, just body like when, when yeah. it's more psychological of like stepping on stage like i'm gonna step on stage and if they don't like my physique and they don't place me that's fine because i have the best physique that i've had in years oh, 100 yeah and I'm still not 100% happy with it. I still, and I think that's a good thing because that's going to drive me forward and do another prep yeah. and improve and improve and improve. So I don't see not being 100% happy. That doesn't mean that I'm 100% unhappy either. Like there is a happy, happy medium Again, there. Yeah, it's that all or nothing. Yeah. There isn't that all. You should, yeah. um, when, when she's saying things like, I'm not fully happy and people are like, oh, oh, oh how dare you yeah, not yeah. say that when you have everything. It's not, Again, you're just listening to the word unhappy. Yeah. But the point is, it means you're not satisfied. Yeah. Because you have higher expectations of yeah. yourself. And that's what and drives that's, us. That's the drive. And yeah. that's whether it's your whether it's your body, whether it's your work, whether yeah. it's um, your family, anything. You should always have a higher expectation. And when you reach it, there should already be another goal. Because along the journey of reaching that that previously set goal... You will, you will inevitably aspire to something even further. Yeah. And that's the point. If we ever lose that drive, you're done. Yeah. You're, you're done. So I feel it's like good. when it's I'm 100% happy aesthetically with my body, I'll end up just setting myself a new challenge. I'll be like, okay, now I need to do marathons or I need to climb a mountain. I yeah, know yeah, yeah. because I'm just that driven a person I body always looks have. looks good, but is it fit enough? Yeah, you yeah. do. There's always an avenue you can take. I always go through always. leaps and bounds of what yeah. I want to do because I haven't competed in two and a half years because I was kind of done with that mentality and I was just working on getting strong and fit and healthy and not just a healthy body. I wanted to make my mind healthy so I could enjoy food and not feel guilty and all that kind of stuff And because yeah. that is a big thing. It's like there's no point in having this perfectly aesthetic bodybuilding body if your mind can't appreciate it and your mind isn't there with you. You need. It's like it, mental health is so important and I think it's Huge. so overlooked, especially in the fitness industry. Yeah. 
Yeah, because it's deemed as such a positive thing to be fit and healthy, yeah. but it can, you can create, a, you can have a real problem with the way you look yeah. at yourself and your body. And that's why we say, be realistic with your goals and be realistic in what you can achieve in certain time frames. And so I think to wrap it up today, because we're coming up to that hour point now, um, I think what you need to take from anything is, as people, along any journey, whether, well, like we say, we've said, talked about fitness a lot here, but in anything that you're doing, whether it's your work, your school, your exams, stop looking so far ahead at that one singular point mm. as being your victory, your be all, your end all. Because there's a lot you can do up to that point that will make you successful and help you reach that end goal. So focus on the short term to succeed in the long term. Yeah. Set yourself smaller goals, little things that... You know, little wins. Just even when you wake up in the morning to change a routine. When you wake up in the morning, instead of, like myself, I'm bad for this. Instead of waking up and maybe checking your messages on your phone, opening your phone up, reading emails, or even going on YouTube. Don't fucking do that. Wake up and get straight out of bed. That's a fucking little win. Don't open the phone. Don't do that. I don't do even that. have my phone in the room. You so. don't, yeah, you're, you're well ahead. These are little victories that you can make on the way. When you get in the shower in the morning. Maybe don't have the shower so hot. Maybe at the end of your shower, turn it to cold. Shock your body a little bit. You know, make it wake up. It's been proven that these things, you know, it helps release um, norepinephrine and things like that. It can help reduce stress. It can help um, with alertness. All these little things that you can do. But it's not hard to turn the shower from hot to fucking cold for 30 seconds and then jump out. That's a small win. For some people, it's a small win to get up and get showered. Exactly. And these little things all the day. You know, like... Tick yeah, it off, if, tick if you, it off. If you're just, let's say, working for yourself or you're at home mum or dad or whatever and you just find yourself just putting on your tracky bottoms, getting up, going through your day and like getting into bed at the end of the night and you don't know where the day is gone, maybe one small step you can do is have that 10 minutes where you get up and you shower and you get dressed and you feel good about yourself. So what you were saying about the girl on the treadmill with the makeup on, that's me because I know that... I went through a phase of not getting up and getting dressed and just slouching around in my pyjamas all day. And it made yep. me feel crap. And when I, now, every day I get up and I get dressed and yep. I shower and I put on a bit of makeup and I do my hair. And yep. maybe it's those little things that make you feel good about yourself. That then boost you towards yeah. a better thing for that day. And that's, again, mentally health healthy. Yes. And I don't bring my phone to bed with me. I have a journal beside my bed. This is what I do for myself because I'm an organized person. And I think it would help anyone i'm not talking about journaling and like you know no, your feelings never just little things i set myself daily goals and like these can be as simple as wash your hair and like that goes into my journal and when i tick it off at night when i've done it i feel good and i know yeah. it's stupid and like i but put it's, down no, it's, like, posit- it's not stupid it's positive reinforcement yeah. it's accomplishment you feel accomplished that little thing yeah. it's done it, you said you're going to do it and you did it and it's yeah. positive reinforcement and another thing i do as well is that i write my journal in pencil because simply, if I don't get to the gym and I don't train arms like I was meant to today, I literally write, wipe it out. I don't scribble it out. I rub it out with my eraser and I put it into the next day and then it gets done the next day. It's not that big of a deal. You can literally move it down the scale. It'll get done eventually. Yeah. And it's not putting it off forever. It's just putting it off to the next day and doing simple things like that and having your, your, your day and your week scheduled out. You can have your weekly goals, your daily goals and your monthly goals and then your year goals of like, by the end of the year, I want to do this. Yeah. But you just focus on the day-to-day goals and then they add up to the week, the month, the year. It's... It's, it sounds like, I know, simple, but that's how no, simple goals can be. Yeah, it is. It's true. It's, those yeah. little wins will take you towards that big victory. Yeah. And that is it for today, guys. That is our Monday crew cast. I hope you've for enjoyed it. Filming. Make sure <laughs> the links for everything that we've talked about today will be in the description. If you've missed any of the previous episodes, make sure you're subscribing to the crew cast. It is available on SoundCloud, iTunes, and obviously video formats here every single Monday on YouTube. Um, I will try and get it on Spotify later down the line. They are starting to kind of do a bit better with the uh, podcast side of things. We'll let you know. But for now, iTunes, SoundCloud, and the YouTube video every Monday. If you'd like to see Lainey back here again, talking about any specific subject that we missed today that's maybe couple orientated. Um, I know some of you want to talk about uh, training as a couple of things like that, but that's a huge topic. So we need to do that on a separate mm. podcast. So if you want to see that, let us know. Uh, comment in the descriptions and hit us up on our social medias. All of them, again, linked as discussed before in the descriptions below that is us monday hope you're gonna have a good week hope you had a good weekend hope you're having a great easter egg day is over if you haven't finished them by now put them in the bin and get ready to start your week tomorrow 
This is the crew cast. I've been Lex. That's been Laney. We are out.